On this episode of Little Bit of a Classic, we're going to talk about fuses and the fuse box of Jaguars of the 70s and 80s. Welcome back to Little Bit of a Classic, and if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content. And today we're going to talk about fuses and the fuse boxes of Jaguars of the 70s and 80s. So that's the uh, XJ6 and XJ12 Series 2, the XJ6 and 12 Series 3, and the XJS. They all have very similar style fuse boxes. Uh, they use these classic round glass type of fuses. And they're all located in pretty much the same area. We're going to talk about the main fuse box. There are various other fuses around the car in other locations, so if you're unsure where they are, you can always check in the owner's manual or come back in a later video because we're probably going to cover them at some point. But we're going to have a look at the main fuse box uh, because a lot of people complain about electrical issues in these cars, things not working, things working sometimes and sometimes not at all. And to be honest, most of the electrical components on these cars are pretty robust and stand the test of time pretty well. but most people forget to maintain their fuse box and have a look at it. And then they just think, oh, just replace this, it's broken. And the issue is probably down there in the fuse box. It's probably a 40 or almost 50 year old fuse that you can just change out and then clean everything up and everything will work just fine. So we'll head on over and have a look at two cars. I have a 1977 XJ12 where the fuse box is in really nice shape. Um, I went through it a few years ago and that car is completely flawless when it comes to electrics. Everything always works and is perfect. And then we have my new project car over there, the 1975 XJ6, where, where there have been previous owners in that fuse box and some other things, but I will leave that for later in the video. So let's head over, have a look at the V12 first, and then we'll have a look at the, well, let's just say not so good fuse box. On Jaguar cars of this era, the main fuse panel is under the dashboard on the driver's side. Doesn't matter if it's right hand drive or left hand drive, it's underneath the driver. You can open the hatch like so. It pulls down and here you have all the fuses laid out so you can see what they do. It's pretty detailed and some are bigger and some are smaller but you can see all the amperage here and they're numbered. This can also be pulled out if you want. Then there should be a cover over the fuse box. Inside the cover there's space to put extra fuses. I'm going to do that, I just forgot to. And then in here are all the fuses. This is a complete standard fuse box and this one is in really good shape. I went through it when I got the car so I cleaned out everything. So I took out all the fuses, replaced them, they're all new fuses and they've all been cleaned up. A really good thing also is that behind each fuse here, you can see the amperage as well. Even though you can see it down here, it's good to see it up here as well. So let's go through some common issues. Well, one thing that can happen, of course, is your fuse can blow. You can easily see it on these glass fuses. You can see the line in there. We'll take one out. A new one, I'll show you in a bit what it looks like. They can blow. Uh, you can have a bad connection down here. So the fuse can actually look good, but there's a bad connection in here, so it still doesn't work. And you can have bad connections in the fuse box, so maybe these tabs are bent out, maybe there's a corrosion. Maybe you've heard of the term of rolling fuses, but rolling the fuse is basically taking your thumb or something over and rolling the fuse back and forth. Basically, if you have a bad connection, that might temporarily restore the connection if... The thing that's not working starts working then, let's say it's the heated rear window or something and you rock it back and forth and then it starts working. Well then you know that the problem is here in the fuse box and you can clean it. So if your car is new to you and you haven't had a look at the fuse box, have a look at it, clean it out, you don't really know what you can find. This one's in really good shape but let's have a look at the XJ6 because well let's just say there has been some modifications and probably a slight fire there. So we're over in the 1975 XJ6. Right away you can see some differences. This is not original, that's an extra fuse box on top of the lid. And there's some weird cables going over here. But if you take the cover off, we can kind of see what's happening. Let's see, it's a little tight with all of this. Okay. 
I'm not sure if you can see over there, but that looks very melted and destroyed. So basically there's been something wrong, a small little electrical fire here, and the fuse box is damaged. So what a previous owner has done is instead of replace the fuse box, which is what I want to do, I'm going to get a spare one, I'm going to replace this someday, is that they put extra fuse box here and ran some weird speaker cables and stuff over there. And well, it works, it's fused at least. But it's not what I would have done over replace a fuse box, which I am going to do. So let's have a look at what fuse it is. It's the third one from the right. Uh, so that is one, two. So that is, if you see here, it's air conditioning or heater motors. This car doesn't have air conditioning, so it's the blower motors for the ventilation and heating system. So there was nothing wrong with them. Something melted here, and they replaced the cables. Uh, I have to say, for being a aftermark replacement, it's not—it's done pretty well. I just don't like the use of a speaker cable, but the rest of it's pretty okay. But I plan on replacing things. I also found some other interesting things when looking here. So, let's say if you first just have a look at the fuses in here, you can think, well, they look good. There's nothing really wrong with them. Have a look at this one. Can you see? It's completely cracked through there. So let's see if I can get it out with one hand. I hope you can see it on camera, but this fuse was actually broken, completely cracked. The funny thing is that it's still working. The metal part is still connected, but it's definitely not a good fuse. The glass is broken. But it is still working. This was for the hazards, and they were still working. But when I wiggled it a bit, I was checking all the fuses, and it was this. So definitely going to be replacing that fuse. So you got to look carefully at everything. You never know what you're going to find. And looking at a lot of these fuses, they look original. So I'm going to check, see what they are. Because sometimes you can see a little bit of burning on the paper. And that means that that fuse has gotten hot at some point. It's probably going to fail pretty soon. So I'm going to have a look at all of them. Replace most of them with new ones. As you can see this one up there. There's definitely oxidation up there. So that's not making a good connection. And the rest actually look pretty fine. So I'm going to take out all of them and clean them out. The easiest way to clean them out is just you can use some type of little solvent. If there's a lot of grease or gum up there, you can use a tiny, tiny bit of sandpaper very carefully. If you don't have a good connection, you can stick a little screwdriver in there and bend out these tabs very carefully. You don't want to snap them, but you can bend them out so you get a better connection with the fuse. And of course, whenever you're doing any of this kind of work, make sure your battery is disconnected so you don't short anything out. Here we are at my workbench, and here are some new fuses. I just have a multimeter. I can show you really quickly how to test if a fuse is good or bad. So if you have a look at this one, I mean it's new so it's going to be good, but this might sit in your car and you have a look here. You see the line goes all the way, fuse looks to be perfectly fine, but like we said before, it could be broken in here, so it could look perfectly fine, still be broken. So you can always check with multimeter, so just have it set to continuity, it beeps usually, and this fuse is perfectly fine. However, there's one more thing you got to think about when you use fuses in British cars. Um, back in the day, they used a different way of rating fuses uh, for British cars than they used for other European cars or for American cars. So, for instance, if you have a 35 amp fuse that we talked about earlier, you think, all right, I'll just go down to the other parts store and get a 35 amp fuse. No, that will not be correct. That fuse will be too powerful. The British amperage number on the fuse is at what amperage it's going to blow immediately. So 35 amp fuse is going to blow at 35 amps. However, a US 35 amp fuse can handle 35 amps continuously and will blow if it exceeds 35 amps. So a 35 amp British fuse, for instance the Lucas fuse, is actually a 17 amp fuse. It is meant to have 17 amps go, go through it continuously and it will blow at 35 amps. You can find these conversion charts online. So for instance, uh, if you get fuses in your country and they're not British fuses, then make sure that you convert it so you get the closest correct fuse 
so you don't put too big of a fuse in there. That's what I think is happening in that fuse box. So I'm going to put a 35 amp fuse, which was a, a US or a European 35 amp fuse. And then something happened to a blower motor or something. And then instead of the fuse uh, going, then the fuse box blew instead. That's it for today's video. And I think that was a really good example of why you need to have the correct fuses. Because that's what I think has happened. Someone had the wrong fuse in that fuse box. Something happened to a blower motor, you know, maybe the motor got stuck or the fan got stuck or something. And then normally the fuse would just blow and that would be fine, but the fuse didn't blow and the circuit blew instead. So beware. Also, we saw that other fuse, which, I mean, it was working, but it was actually cracked in the glass. And I mean, it was just a matter of time before that fuse stopped working and that's your hazard warning lights. And you kind of want those to work because that's the most important thing to work is if you break down, you want people to be able to see that you have broken down and that they can avoid running into you. So that's all for this episode. Remember, check your fuse box if you haven't, go through it. You'll be a lot happier because it's a lot nicer to check the fuse box when you're at home in your nice warm garage or maybe you're out in the sun than doing it on the side of the road when something won't work in the rain. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And what do you guys think? Do you think the electrics are pretty reliable in these cars? I think they are. I just think that the fuse box needs to be looked at every now and then. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Aluminum Effect Classic. I'll see you soon.